freedom. Not for some of the people that inherit the surface of the earth, but for all of them. And I say inherit because it's only going to be the righteous and upright that get it. And I say the more the merrier. I want everybody to be saved. Because there's plenty of room on the earth. Can easily support 7 billion people. So everybody, I mean, that's it. That's what God wishes. None to perish, but all to come to repentance. So you too can inherit this perfect world. All of us can. If we repent of our evil and say, let's see things through God's eyes. And then it'll show you just how evil you've been in your thinking. How small-minded. How narcissistic. How selfish. <coughs> how narrow-minded. <coughs> how faulty you've been thinking and uh, you'll turn to him and he'll heal you and that's the repentance is get on the right track yeah you've been on the wrong track but I'm quick to forgive I'm slow to anger come on you get the reward you get just as good a reward as all those that spent their lives in debauchery all you know whoever it was you still you're gonna get the same blessings of eternal life in a perfect world down to the smallest detail and we just need to be honest and realize what that means, the implications thereof. The, you know, what does that really mean? Perfect down to the smallest detail. I mean, imagine something bad and just imagine a fix. There always God gave us this imagination. This is what distinguishes us from all the other creatures. They're all uh, biological, instinctual automatons. We are not. We are little gods with this vast, unlimited imagination. Where our potential is unlimited. Okay, the sky is the limit. Infinity is the limit. So we can have it perfect. We're all without excuse to just admit that. Admit that we have the ability to imagine an ideal perfect world. And that we're without excuse to work toward that world. We have an obligation, responsibility, a duty. We should all feel compelled to work toward a world that's more livable. Even if it's only doing it for your children or your children's children, or friends, or family, whoever. Do it for somebody you love, even if you don't care about your own life. You say, I wish I was dead. I can't stand this place. I get it. And that's the people in their right mind can't stand this place the most. They're the ones at least tolerant of injustice, like myself. I hate it. Okay? And so, yeah, I got the most to look forward to. And everybody else that hates injustice, and you know, and that's why they hate their lives living in this world, is hard. It's not much fun to live in a world that's rife, with created, invented, artificial, manufactured, unnecessary, wholly unnecessary injustice. And uh, knowing how they operate in your face, creating the poverty, creating the wealth and income disparity, creating all the social, political, uh, and economic ills out there, okay? All the things that go along with it are being created. They're being invented by these people. And uh, and they're and they're doing it on purpose. They're diabolistic, and that is a term. If you look it up, they're diabolical, and that to the nth degree. That's it. It's devilish. That's what they are. And they're like evil genius, mad scientists. They're very smart. They're very cunning and crafty. They're very shrewd. Okay, astute in that way. That evil genius. So they know what they're doing. They just know how to mold us and form us. They've done doing. They've gotten this far. But we've got to know they're inventing our problems on purpose. There is a design. There's a method to the madness. They don't want us to get along with each other. They want us divided. This is they get more power, more control. Their relevance and their security, their freedoms are more protected. The worse they can make it for humanity. This is why they love war. Okay, they love strife. They turn brother against brother. The Civil War. I mean, you've got to admire people. They were all Americans. They were all veterans, okay? Uh, so all these Confederate soldiers believed what they were doing or they wouldn't have done it. And a lot of the people don't realize it had more to do with money. Remember the Confederate currency? Competing currency. That will get you killed quicker than anything. Okay, it was a slavery crap. The North and South, where they were all using slaves. They're using them worse today because it's under our noses now. They're doing it in our faces. They've moved the Overton window so far, we can't see it anymore. It's the forest for the trees analogy. It's in your face. Don't you understand? You're a rent slave. If you can work a 40-hour week job, I don't care what job it is. That's a lot of work by today's standard. You're hogging all the work. That's what's going on here. If you go to a minimum guaranteed income, Okay, maybe some people would share the work that's available out there and let people feel a little more relevant than they do right now. That's what would happen. We'd go to work with a bounce in our steps, with a, with a song on our lips, with joy in our heart instead of how it is. Okay, that's what would happen. 
We don't need people working these long hours. We need people doing productive jobs that are useful for society. But the vast majority of jobs revolve around the problems. And if the problems ever, ever went away, we'd have mass unemployment. Do you get the madness that we're all immersed in? Come on, for crying out loud, people. Get real. Get honest. So you get how this thing works. Okay, you get what would happen to these people if we started fixing problems. And yes, it makes me angry that they've gotten away with it this far. And people got to wake up. It's in your face, man. I mean, we're not going to fix this problem unless we confront this problem, unless we understand this problem and the source of this problem, how it's being caused and who is, who is accommodating it, who is ushering it in. Who's moving this Overton window so far that people just can't think straight? They don't know. They don't understand. 15 bucks an hour? Go back 50 years. Let's look at minimum wage today and, and the buying power of minimum wage as opposed to what it was 50 years ago. Okay? And some people, oh, well, that was inflation. That's not, that's not natural. That's not normal. That's not capitalism. It's none of those things. It's regressive. It's anti-capitalistic. Oh, my God. God help us. I mean, you see me wincing because I'll tell you, folks, I mean, this is serious. You've got to understand how this satanic policy is being carried out. But these people will stop at nothing to get their way. They're just bratty, spoiled little brats, got to bust everything up. And all the people that just want to, it's like we've all been busted up. Okay, America is in shambles. It's like a Christmas ornament, giant Christmas ornament that these people took, smashed it up with bats and all this for profit, for their benefit, personal benefit, knowing that it's not going to work, but it's benefiting them temporarily. And now it's all smashed up. And they're, you know, they're sitting back with all the ill-gotten gain, all the loot, all the power and the control over humanity okay and they're saying oh no he fix it put a little scotch tape here a little super glue over here and you'll get it together eventually uh, 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 and you know all the meanwhile getting a big belly laugh out of this thing but we're messed up man people got to understand basic economic principles they've got to understand supply and demand what free market really means what it produces how it produces prosperity across the board why you can define progress as a steady incremental growth in the worth of your currency cost of living deflation okay with very temporary cost of living spikes due to disruptions in the supply chain i've explained this stuff practically in every single video series i've done because nobody seems to understand it i don't hear anybody explaining this stuff on simple nuts and bolts layman level speech to other people and this is what we need because knowledge is power. Understanding is knowledge, is information, is power. But people have to be willing to learn it. they got to come out of that ignorance is bliss philosophy. They've got to embrace it and carry their fair share of the cross willingly. And this is for the betterment of themselves too. Because anything that benefits your fellow man that is struggling harder than you, okay, is going to benefit you. It's going to make you happiness. It's a reward from that's given from above. This is the giver of all good gifts, and a good gift doesn't go away. You incorporate it into your character, your nature, your personality becomes who you are. It brings you gladness of heart. It brings you peace of mind. It brings you joy. Okay, It brings you bliss, and it brings you euphoria. And God blesses you in many ways through this empowerment. When you know black from white you know right from wrong you know lies from truth you know and nobody can tell you you don't know basic economic principles and why it worked it should work the way that you say it should work why and how you can define progress okay just that's it man and understand that we're being duped and explain that to people through this capitalistic policies that it's just a way to steal from people we're not going to fix this thing by tweaking it getting involved in the excruciating minutiae of the economy by growing the economy throwing these terms out there very nebulous terms and gross domestic product the gdp or oh credit availability and all this stuff i mean that to me is the you know fixing you know, creating jobs. We're gonna that's scotch tape and super glue on the giant Christmas. No, we gotta get a fundamental reset. We gotta go back to two thousand eight. People got to see that as a good thing instead of a bad thing. Because now so many, where are those 90% of people 
that were saying, oh, no, this is a mistake. They shouldn't bail these people out. They, but, the, you know, they're too big to jail. They're too big to fail. So I'll roll over. I'll capitulate. I'll acquiesce to this. And now that, you know, get used to it, man. They, you know, they'll tell me this 90 percent. Most of them would tell me now, oh, get over it, man. That's ancient history now. Get on with the program. Move along. Let that Overton window move. Accept it, man. Okay, I have because they've profited. They benefit. They see it like that. Instead of seeing, hey, look, by now I could have two or three homes if they weren't so damned expensive. I'd be more free to sell the one I have and move somebody else if I saw prices in decline. I could afford it. They don't think about that. They don't understand that the current income would go up. So if you've got to see a reduction in the cost of whatever goods you offer society, whatever services you offer society, or whatever combination thereof that you offer society, if you see a decline or if you willingly say, I'm going to start this ball a rolling, okay, I'm in, like playing a poker game, right? Ante in and say, yeah, I'll take 50 cents less an hour. Okay, you understand how that has a snowball effect? It's a chain reaction in reverse. Okay, it's a beautiful thing. And this is what we need to see. Because what we've had now is all cause and effect. One thing leads to another. Chain reaction. That's what drives inflation. It feeds on itself. Hey, if your cost of living goes up, it doesn't take a, a brainiac to figure out that if you don't get a commensurate proportional pay adjustment, income adjustment, then for all intents and purposes, mathematically speaking, logically speaking, you just got to pay cut. That's what's been going on for these 55 years I've been talking about. That's what's been going on. It goes whoosh, right over people's head. I'm, why, why should that go over your head? What am I saying that is in any, un, in any way unreasonable, illogical, unintelligible? What? Tell me what it is. Tell me how I'm not a fiscal conservative. Tell me. Just because God's policies happen to be logical, just because logic dictates that liberal policies happen to be logical and reasonable and, and godly and proper and right and, and ethical and, and moral, okay, and that they would actually fix problems in society and it'd be a lot cheaper to do so. Doesn't that combine the best of, of both worlds, of the, the best, finest conservative thinking and the best, finest liberal thinking? Doesn't that actually bring it all together and say we are unified? Okay, we have one God. We have one set of parents. We have one owner. Okay, and uh, we sh if we seek to please that owner by giving, that's what I'm doing. In my, I'm giving. I'm giving understanding about these issues. To the public even if one guy takes it and runs he's got a platform that's bigger okay and the thing spreads and we all start grasping the idea of sound economic policy and it's de demanding okay under no uncertain terms that we the people have some say so in this some account that we get to have oversight and we get to hold the uh the money printing class their feet to the fire and say no no, we're willing to offer you anything. I, we don't care that you're rich. We don't care that you can have all the goods and services in the world. Fine with us. But you're not going to do this. You're not going to deliberately murder the working class. That's what it does. And destroy, decimate their hope in achieving the American dream okay, of home ownership. You're not going to do that. We're not going to tolerate that anymore. We demand to see true progress. And here's how we're going to define progress under capitalism, under supply and demand, free market policies and precepts and principles. Here it is. And here's how it works. This is why it works, okay? Don't argue with me because I know what the hell I'm talking about. Unless you're a total a-hole liar, you will agree that I know what the hell I'm talking about in regard to this specific issue, okay? I apologize if I'm coming across harsh, blunt, or arrogant, um, you know, but I really do. I, I, I resent having to walk around with this, um, this overwhelming, acute, chronic, perpetual frustration, this sense of indignation. I don't want to be that guy, but I can't seem to help it. I want to be a really nice guy. I want to be like the nicest guy I ever met or anybody else could ever, anybody could ever meet. That's what I'm working for because I believe that about God, okay? 
And so, you know, just think of the finest parents out there and put them all together and have a consensus how they would treat their children. Okay, so when it comes to what Victor Hugo taught, okay, let's let's temper that with that understanding okay that knowledge of how it would be and that's how god would have it and that's the way we've got to work toward that's the direction that's what we've got to cultivate and promote is a world where we're living together in peace freedom harmony safety security prosperity across the board i mean if you believe in prosperity for yourself for your family and your kids but you don't believe in it for others i mean that's hypocrisy where do you think you're going